Hey there, everybody, and welcome to the Collider Recap Show of Flash here on the Collider Video Network. We're so glad you decided to join us tonight. My name is John Campy. I'm going to be one of your hosts tonight talking about this episode. I don't know, what was this, four, five? Five, sure. the darkness and the light. There it is. Episode five, the <laughs> darkness and the light. I should check these things before we come on set. <laughs> Just do these things. Joining me tonight to talk about this episode of The Flash, first of all, sitting here on my left... David Griffin here, a.k.a. Wally West, a.k.a. Sexual Chocolate here to bring you another <laughs> oh, 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 Sexual oh, Chocolate oh, right. <laughs> Little shout out to Christian's costume that he wore on, uh, on uh, Movie Talk the other day. <laughs> Sitting over here on my right. Hey, y'all. Uh, I'm John Roca here. So happy we got, we got so many new characters that were introduced and so many little hints to what may be coming. And sitting down on the left, the sausage pregnant... Sausage pregnant Twinkie. Uh, <laughs> I am Kaori Takei. So glad you guys can join us for The Flash. Yeah, um, tonight's episode of The Flash, The Darkness and the Light. Here's how it's going to run down tonight, guys. We're going to talk about some of the things we really liked about this episode. We're going to talk about some of the things maybe they could have done better. And then we're going to take some of your Twitter questions. And how do you tweet to us? How do you send in Twitter questions to us? Easiest way is send out a tweet and use the hashtag Collider Flash. Let's send that out, and you'll see at the end of the show, we've got a few questions that we've taken from you guys on the Twitter sphere. And I'm going to tell you right now, before we get to our positives, Favorite episode of the season so Me far. Me too. Yeah. I think it was my favorite episode of the season five minutes into this Dev and Dev episode. <laughs> I was like grinning the whole time, the whole show. Yeah. Doesn't mean everything was perfect. There were a couple things that made me roll my eyes a little bit, but overall, solid, solid episode. Absolutely. So David, as has become the tradition, let's start with you. Start listening off your positives about tonight's episode. Positive number one, the best first date scene I have seen on a television oh. show in a long time. <laughs> With Cisco looking through the the glasses, it was your note of Yeah, it was, yeah, it, was of, yeah. it was fantastic. It was great. I loved all the <laughs> little comments about you know complimenting her on what she looks like and like when he puts the glasses in, she just go kind of like you know getting low because he wants to see what's going on and it was just, it was just it was it was cute. You know, I mean, I, I, lo I love Patty Spivet. Peace Spivet. I mean, Peace she Pivot. must Peace really Pivot. like Pivot. him to let him get away with all well, that. And, and it was great because <laughs> Roka, you know, during the show was saying like, wait, she's a detective. How does she not know he's that blind? Yeah, right. But she is. Like, how is she not picking up? Yeah, right. But then, yeah. she, then she says it, yeah. And then another favorite, I, I mean, it's got to be Cisco delivered one of the best oh, lines man. of the season. Yes. I'm, sure all, I'm sure it's everybody's favorite here. Yeah. Everybody's favorite. Harrison Wells. And our Harrison Arthur Wells is evil, but you're just a dick. Mm -hmm. I'm just no, 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 no. He didn't say it. He's saying He goes, our Harrison Wells may have been evil. You're just a dick. You're just a dick. That was our so Cisco good. moment. Of, I think that's safe to say that was our Cisco moment of the night. Yes. And maybe the Cisco moment of the year yeah. so far. Mm -hmm. and there, yeah. there have been it's several times. What are some of the other things that stood out to you? Uh, I, you I, I, I just loved just Harrison Wells and Joe. Just him being back, but him also being different. Because we've, yeah. like it's talked about in the first season, we saw the flashback of Harrison Wells. He had a girl. The girl died in the car crash. This isn't the same Harrison Wells. I mean, forget different character. Forget Harry Barthon yeah. and all that. This is a different Harrison Wells. This guy is more like he's, you know, more, balls. The, he's, he's more like the Steve Jobs. Yeah. Though we've yeah. seen the Steve Jobs movie. You know, he's he's very much like that. He's strong, Roka, as you said before. Yeah. He's determined. But it looks like he may have an ulterior motive. His daughter is being held captive, so right. we don't know really. Because in the end, we see him looking through the CC yeah. Jitters window, looking at them, very, you know, just kind of looking at them, observing them. So what's his motivation? Is his job to kill Barry? Yeah. That's maybe something we'll talk about later, but, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, Roka, let's go over to you. Some of the things that stood out to you that you really liked about Yeah, Sunset, absolutely. So. I agree with everything David said. That first date seems fantastic. I have a mad crush on Patty Spivet now. <laughs> and uh, I, thought, I, thought, I thought the stuff with Harrison Wells, this is the stuff that is, we were missing from the show, and I think it's not a, con it's not a uh, coincidence that this is your favorite episode, mm. John, because, and I think everyone here at the panel, because we got Harrison to come back, and he was in full form in a way that we haven't seen before. His ballsiness, he still was touching the stuff that we remember him, like he was still counseling Barry, he was still doing stuff with Barry that he did last year that we enjoyed on the first season, but it has a harder bent to it, it has more of an edge to it, which I really, really enjoyed. And I love the the one thing that this show does really well, is it is it just drops knowledge like it's no big deal. And I, they don't make a dun-dun-dun moment yeah, out yeah. of it, you know, it's like dun-dun-dun, here's Hawk Girl. Atlantis? Dun, 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 Atlantis, dun-dun-dun, Aquaman. Yeah. It's just like, hey, <laughs> my friend is this, yeah, I have a best friend from Atlantis. And it was just thrown yeah. away, and I love that about the show. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make a big deal about what it is. It's up to you to freak out about those moments, and that's what I think is really brilliant. Mm -hmm. 
I like the. Oh, sorry, I was say too. Just going off what you're saying, just like yeah. the whole uh, Caitlin and Jay Garrick in the van. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of talking about like the differences. Like, do you have coffee and all these? You know, it was, it was kind of cute. Yeah. yeah. It was in essence two first dates. Mm-hmm. Just. I do yeah. kind of want to see more of them. Hopefully. Yeah. Soon. What about you, Kara? What are some of the things that you really loved about tonight's episode? What I really, really enjoyed about this episode was that it was pretty much a kind of, I guess, a Cisco centric episode yeah. where. Mm-hmm. We got to see Cisco develop into Vibe. He got the name, and also he's realizing, yeah, he is metahuman. He can't hide it from anyone. Everyone knows. And we got a lot of Cisco in this episode. He helped them out find Dr. Light. And not only was he evolving, but we also got to see Barry evolve as well, where he got the new um, Mirage ability, which was pretty cool. So yeah. I really, really liked the developments of the character in this particular episode that yeah. they got to do mm-hmm. because Dr. Wells was there helping them. Um, you know, develop into who they are to become. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, for me, okay. Up on, uh, up to this point, I while I appreciate what they're trying and what they're going for with uh, peace pivot. Um, <laughs> peace bivvy. <laughs> peace bivvy. <laughs> I have just not bought into this relationship at, so at all this whole year. But I gotta say. The date was adorable. Yeah. It it was cute and I found myself grinning through it and it's the first time this season that I have actually felt chemistry between the two mm. characters because all this time and you look they may go right back to having no chemistry next week but up until this point in the season every time they try to make it look like they have chemistry it feels so awkward and artificial. I just have not bought into it. But that date scene yeah. which is so different than what we're used to in a flash show or an arrow or something like that. That date scene was adorable. It was yeah. really charming. And I found myself enjoying just watching the interaction and the banter. And if you had told me earlier tonight, okay, there's going to be a date between these two characters, about five minutes of screen time is going to be on. I would have said, well, that's five wasted minutes right there. Right. But instead they were five of the most enjoyable minutes in the episode. Um, Harrison. All right. I think we are going to find out something very horrible has happened to this Harrison in his past. I mean, obviously, Eobard Thawne didn't kill his fiance, uh, right. but I think, you know, we just saw him and his daughter. We didn't see the mom. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I think something horrible still happened to that. Changed him to a very hard person. The only person he's not a hard badass with is his daughter. Yeah. Um, but I'm telling you right now, other than Cisco, this Earth to Harrison Wells is now my favorite character on The Flash. He's pretty I'm, badass. Yeah. He is, he's so direct and forceful. He's got no nonsense. He's got no time for people's nonsense. He just steps right in. By the way, I'm the smartest person in the world. Boom. Yeah. And then he just drops it on them. And I thought that was really cool. The other thing I really liked is we got our first really good look and feel of Zoom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Zoom isn't just a speecher. Like, I thought it was a little bit corny earlier in the episode when Jay said... You don't understand Zoom isn't just fast. He's a nightmare. He's blah, blah, And you're like, but then you saw that scene with him. And yeah, he is something out of a nightmare. Yeah. This is this is beyond, this is way beyond reverse flash from season one, which is what you have to do in these episodes. You have to have the threat grow, you know, throughout, throughout the uh, progress of the show or else you get the law of diminishing returns. Yeah. Zoom is a step up. Mm-hmm. from reverse flash plain and simple he looked terrifying and I, I thought that was really good the way they handled that um it's really cool i love the actress and i cannot remember her name who plays linda i was very happy to hear she was going to be back because i thought they should have done a little bit more with that relationship between barry and linda in season one i thought one of my favorite episodes actually from season one and one of my favorite scenes was when they were trying to have sex that oh, was it was right. Valentine's Day episode. It was right. so <laughs> awkward and weird, but really funny to watch, and I really yeah. enjoyed that. So I'm glad to see they're using her more. Uh, although the fact that there was absolutely zero awkwardness between you, oh yeah, you, I was dating you, and now there's zero awkwardness. It's all right. cool. Okay, whatever. Um, but I will say the other thing about Patty. Um, I am more convinced than ever. She's dead. I mean, she's <laughs> yeah, so dead. So dead <laughs> no. so soon. No. So soon she will be so no. dead. Because, I mean, <laughs> you, you just look at the first of all, they're kissing. First of all, the hero starts to be happy. First big red flag. Mm. If the hero's happy, bad sign. That's a good point. Um, he's he's sitting, standing there in the street having this big passionate kiss with the girl you will know he is not destined to be with. Right. He's he's destined. He's going to be with Iris at some point, and I really love that they're taking a break from the Barry and Iris thing. 
uh, Peace Bivy is the perfect distraction from that, but a distraction is all she is. Pretty soon, she's going to be a villain of the week fodder, and she Aww. we're going to have Barry Aww. tears on her no. on the sidewalk See, because Zoom killed her. I'm not convinced that she's absolutely a goner. Oh, I'm telling yeah. you, she's gone. She wow. is gone. It's gonna be a wow. sad day. Pack her, you know, <laughs> pack her swimsuit and her travel bag. She is gone. Man. I'm telling you, she's gone. But anyway, those are a bunch of the things that we liked about tonight's episode. I, I should mention this too. I didn't quite get this. More, this isn't a positive or a negative. Did they say King Shark is dead? They, yeah, they, they I didn't have him in, this, in their metahuman. No. Just they said he cell. saved. Um, he's, uh, yeah, they didn't well, say, oh, we him. now have him right. in custody. Yeah. They say, yeah. okay, yeah, so he Where did. We just find that's Wells. As Wells would have killed him, so I, yeah. I guess that's okay. Well, let's move on then to some of the things that we thought might have been weaknesses in tonight. Some of the things maybe they could have done a little better. Carrie, let's start Ooh. with you. What could they have done better with this episode? To be honest with you, it was such a solid episode for me that it really it's was. really hard for me to think of something negative unless mm -hmm. I'm super duper trooper nitpicky. <laughs> um, go for it. Be nitpicky for a second. I just thought the the fight at the end with uh, Dr. Light and That's Flash. That's exactly what yeah. I was going to say. Fell a little off for me and how he was so nervous and all he had to really do was just push her over. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so uh, just run run behind her just and punch behind. her in the head. Yeah. Yeah. Why is this a dilemma? Yeah. What's what's the problem here? <laughs> it's like, I, I can't get around her. What do I do? It's like, yeah. just run around her real fast on the train and then, yeah, hit her. It's like, it's she just have, just have eyes in the back of her right. head. It was in too yeah. wide open of a space for that for his worry about it to, to be <laughs> real. I yeah, I mean, <laughs> just completely go around the train. You use the train as a distraction. It's a huge, just go around it and get her. Yeah, and you it know was what's, it killed me. When he's first trying the mirage effect, mm -hmm. she's trying to take single shots yeah. at him. Can't. So she's like, F this, boom, and put out this big light wave. Yeah. That's true. Kill them. So when he tries the mirage scene again, what does she do? Go right back to the single <laughs> yeah. shot yeah. things. Like, yeah. I know that other thing worked last mm -hmm. time, but I'm sure it wouldn't work again. Again, so I won't try it. I mean, so that was that was a little bit weak, wasn't it? Anyway, Roko, yeah. what about you? What uh, anything negative for you? Definitely agree with that. I, but I also think um, I thought the way, which was a little bit of a letdown, the way Cisco got his name, I was a little bit like cheesy, and really? I just it bothered me because it was like I get it, Cisco got named by someone else when he's used to naming everybody else. But I thought the I thought the vibe thing should have happened a little more natural, a little more organically, and rather than just get it on the first mm. try. And I so wish for I me that. Earlier in the episode, yeah, yeah. when when they're asking him, so what? How, how does your power work? I wish he had said something along the lines of, "I just get this vibe." Yes, blah, blah, blah. Mm. And then later, yep. Barry can call back to say, "Well, you said vibe. Maybe it's like, right. It would have felt better. That would have felt it more felt, natural. It yeah. felt perfect for me the way it <laughs> did came it? out. It did. And I, I would have been frustrated. If they're like, mm, "We'll we'll talk about this next episode or something." <laughs> and the and the other thing, the last thing is the Cisco when he was like talking about his powers, this dramatic turn. Where he's away, and there's, I thought that was unnecessary in terms of the staging. And I was like, just this is not the show. That's not what the show does. It the felt very so proper the yeah. way he did the that. The show yeah. doesn't do that. The show confronts stuff, talks about stuff. They always are looking at each other when they're doing it. And I think that's important. I thought that was a little soap opera. Yeah. It was, it was a bit. David, what about you? What are some things that maybe didn't work as great for you as everything else in the show? One quick thing before we go into my negative, I liked uh, Caitlin Snow at one point had that whole mention of like going bad or we, we wouldn't oh, go yes, bad. Yes, we, yeah. 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 We, go bad. we wouldn't go bad. I was like, boom. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Killer Frost. You know, I don't know how it, we're gonna... Do you think that's a three, two, one to Killer Frost from Earth Two coming? Do you think? That's oh yeah, possible? I think so. Yeah. So it's not yeah. going to be our Caitlyn. No. It's going to be Earth Two. Caitlyn. I think it's going to be Earth Two. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, negative. It's just the show. I know it. There's people just ha come and go. You know, characters are in an episode and they're not in an episode. I'm like, we're like Jay Garrick wasn't in the previous yeah. episode. This episode, like, let's go get him. And he kind of comes in. He's like. He just walks in out of nowhere. It's like, where's he been? Where's he <laughs> staying? And I realize that the actor's on Masters of Sex. I know he's got other things to do. He's busy. You know, I'm sure there's payment issues, but it's like, <laughs> get, like a, get like a better explanation of like where he is. Like, does yeah. he have a house? Did they get him an apartment? He just kind of shows up out of nowhere. And is says, he hanging out with Caitlin? He is hanging out yeah, with Caitlin. You know, I mean, where's he sleeping? Speaking of soap opera, he's a little dramatic. Oh, he's dramatic. He has a pose. Yeah. He has that old. Well, that's the thing I he, like. He kept yeah. doing this thing when when he was talking to Wells. <laughs> yeah. Like he was having, like he was having the the the. the hot dog 
processing through his body. It's, it's all a guy. He need to puff out his chest. Yeah, anymore. Yeah. Talk pregnant. Yeah. Like, you know, it was just strange. I also thought the thing with him that was strange too was that he was like, Barry, don't be afraid. Fight. You know, like, mm. don't quit. And then the next thing they go, we're going to go after Zoom. No, you should be afraid. You shouldn't do this. It's like, wait, you just told <laughs> me not to be afraid. And now you're saying, he, I should be afraid. And it hurts because he just, again, he just kind of comes out of nowhere and just yeah. starts saying these things because he's not a part of the team for the whole time. You know, so I don't know. He did. One of my big negatives, mm. aside from that fight at the train station, was <laughs> I thought that was poorly handled. I yeah. really did that yeah. fight. But I was also thought they turned Garrick from a cool Obi-Wan kind yeah. of yeah. figure into a whiny little baby. Yeah. They, like right. he came across as really whiny this mm -hmm. episode. They castrated you know? him in, in a way. Yeah. You and we're going to throw lightning in a previous episode. Yeah. I mean, come on. This guy's. Yeah, I know. And it's just all of a sudden he's very whiny. He's re And I'm not saying because he thought Barry wasn't ready. That was cool. If, but. Yeah. It's just the way he came about it, that he went mm -hmm. from this very strong, very, I'm the one who's coming from a position of knowledge and strength, and I'm here to impart courage into you yeah. sort mm -hmm. of position to, the character went in a totally different direction. And I don't know if that's like supposed to be a hyper-realism of the effect Wells has on him, because maybe Wells gets under his skin, yeah. or, or whatever. I mean, I don't really know, but th I thought that was also kind of weird. Also, at the end of the episode, when we see Zoom has uh, Wells's daughter. Oh yeah. What I wasn't really clear on, now I, I know a lot of you will probably think it was very clear it was one thing, and maybe you're probably right, but when it was happening and I was watching it, I wasn't really clear, is this now, or is this oh. another semi-flashback? Is this, because I just assumed that what, because you know, Garrick was asking, you know, why is he suddenly coming forward now? I thought, because Zoom killed his daughter. Mm -hmm. I bet you anything, Zoom mm -hmm. killed his daughter. So is that flashing back to Zoom doing something horrible to Wells' daughter and that's what changed Wells? Or was that now in the presence to give us a sense that maybe Wells has an ulterior motive mm -hmm. at this point? Or is it a whole different other type of misdirection? Right. I'm just not really sure. But all the rest of you guys, Afterwards, I kind of got the feeling you just assumed it was all in the now. So maybe yeah. it is. Maybe yeah. I'm looking too much into yeah, it. Yeah, I definitely thought it was in the now. And I thought, oh, Dr. Wells is still not a nice guy. You and know? I think yeah. Wells has, I think Zoom has yeah. Wells under his control. But I don't like that. Well, because, I mean, because he has a daughter. I think Wells yeah. knows that. Oh, I see. That's I why see. I think yeah. he's there. I don't mm -hmm. know if it's to yeah. kill Barry. Yeah. But it's to accomplish something for Zoom. For his daughter, ultimately. Yeah, for his daughter, daughter to get his maybe daughter. Maybe he's, he's really just there to use but, Barry to rescue his daughter. Because yeah. didn't Zoom say something about that depends on what your dad does or something like right. that? It's all dependent on what happens next, yeah. you know? So I think he's waiting for. What Wells was the to first something. thing he said? Your father has abandoned you. Wasn't that the oh, first thing yeah, he yeah, said yeah. to her? Oh, he did. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, your she's father's very, abandoned you. She's very clean for being in a prison. Yeah, no, it's like, she's, like, she's like, taking care of nice, him. Nice, very yeah. stylish yeah. shirt. No dirt Make on her face. Make a pair, please. And Make even she pair. was cocky. She, she's like, like, my dad's on. the smartest guy in the world. He's going to, you know. Yeah, yeah my right. dad's going to kick your ass. Yeah, sort of thing. yeah, this is the classic kind of thing. I do like that Dr. Wells still remains this mysterious, dimensional guy that you have no idea what his intentions are. Yeah. He's creepy, but smart and eloquent. And I'm glad he's back for yeah. the rest. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm glad to having Tom Cavanaugh so in the show just makes the show feel more complete. Right? It yeah, feels yeah, yeah. like the flag because as great as it's been to have, um, uh, oh, I keep forgetting the other doctor's name who becomes Firestorm. Victor. Uh, yeah, the doc, yeah, Victor Barber. Yeah. Victor, <laughs> as great as it is having him there, and you know, Joe kind of half filled that role, but Joe's got his own role to play yeah, in the mm -hmm. show. It, there, as good as the season has been, it has felt like a little something's missing, and I totally felt that puzzle piece fall into place when Tom Cavanaugh yeah. is back mm -hmm. in Star Labs talking with the mm -hmm. team again. Yeah. It's like. Even though he's like a totally different Wells, it's Wells. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it just felt like the show was complete again to yeah. me. So maybe that's part of the reason why with the first five minutes, I said to these guys, five minutes of the show, he <laughs> goes, I already love this episode. <laughs> this episode is great so far. All right, folks, well, listen, I said we're going to take some of your Twitter questions, and we're going to do that right now. Now, once again, if you want to get a Twitter message to us, just send out a tweet and include the hashtag Collider Flash. You can see that right there. Just send out that tweet, we'll see it. So we're gonna take some of the questions you guys have sent out to us right now. And we're gonna start with this one. And this one comes to us from Bart Burnett who writes, do you think with Zoom holding Wells' daughter hostage will make Barry travel to Earth too soon? What I, do you guys think? I think it's more likely Zoom will travel to this Earth, not the other way around. So yeah. I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. It might happen eventually, but I think Zoom's coming over here. 
Is he is he going through the portals? Like, is he going back and forth between the Earths? Not I yet. haven't got like, that well, sense yeah, yet. That's, well, that's yet. what I was wondering. And so the question is a little bit like maybe this person who asked the question thinks that that mm. he it's go, he, he's able to travel between both because I don't know why Barry would go to Earth two if Zoom is here with the daughter in Earth in our well, well as it, far you know, as we know, Zoom is. Sending people to come over to Earth. Right. So I isn't think he here? Isn't he? Well, because in the preview, it looks he's like he's not here. Because in the preview, it says even yeah. at the end of the show, it says Earth Two, right. and that's mm -hmm. where okay. the daughter is, okay. and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Now, this this could go to my other theory about how. What if Wells, okay, he's got Wells' daughter now, but what if Wells isn't working for him at all? He's actually just trying to use Barry and use the team to get his daughter back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a sense, if anything, and this is a big if, I'm speculating here, at some point, Wells will break down, he'll realize he has to trust these people, he shares with Barry and them what's really going on, which prompts Barry to want to go into Earth 2 mm. yeah. and try to save his daughter. That's the only thing I can guess do, at this point. Do you think that Zoom will, it's more likely that Barry will go to Earth 2 than Zoom coming into Earth? I think if anything, Zoom comes to Earth 1 near or at the end of the season. Oh. Yeah. That's that's the way I'm feeling right. What are I, you I think Barry's going over there. I think he's going to see his mom. I think yes. his mom's going to be alive. Yes. Mm. I think he's going to see. I mean, I know we're speculating that yeah. so Barry excited. is possibly <laughs> Zoom, but let's say hypothetically Barry's not Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. He maybe sees his mother. Barry's other dad. Yeah. Like dead Barry's dad could be. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right. So I mean, we might see his yeah. other self there. Maybe I that's mean, why he doesn't want to kill Barry and Earth One himself. Oh. And, and this is not I total speculation. What I love, what I love <laughs> about this is this is not Back to the Future. You know, like Marty, Marty, if you see yourself, you're going to. You know, they're going to destroy the universe or whatever. You right. can't do that here. You can see yourself. It's but fine. did anybody get a clear idea about why is it the, the people from Earth 2 who are brought over are have a compulsion that they want to kill their doppelgangers here in Earth 1? It's because they want get back. Only, yeah. They don't exactly. have access yeah. to the have portal. To the, yeah. No, they don't know how to get through it, I guess. So there's right. a way to get through it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't get that. Using what's, that, what's using that whatever that? that thing is that they because have they, in their every hands. Every time they say, like, it's the only way I can get home. Yeah. Okay. I have to kill so, you and kill yeah. to yeah. get home and kill yeah. Flash. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, and maybe okay. they'll go through the portal if it's with if, when Jay Garrick gets his speed back. Maybe right. they go on a mission in Earth Two well, together. That was and one that, of my, and you might be right, John. One week is a couple weeks ago. Is I just don't think we have enough character development with these villains. Yeah. Hopefully now with the other Linda here, yeah. looks like they're keeping her around to use her. So hopefully yeah. we'll get a little more explanation of who she is, what she's like, because these guys just come over. It's like you said, John. It's like what's their motivation? Yeah, you know, besides just wanting to get home. So we got one more person in the magical cells with no bathrooms, no food. <laughs> Never have to change clothes, but your makeup is always perfect. <laughs> it's a wonderful place, those no, prisons they've got good. in Star <laughs> Wonderful place. All right, let's go to the next question. And the next question comes from DJ Mike Zero, who writes, Do you think there's a chance we'll see some mysticism elements from Arrow bleed over into Flash? Now, for those of you who don't watch Arrow... This season of Arrow, they are getting into mysticism. They're getting into magic and power of, of that nature, as opposed to metahumans. They've got, that's their own version of metahumans, mm -hmm. I suppose. They even got Constantine is going to be popping right. up on the next episode <laughs> of Arrow. From the actual actor who played it on the, was it NBC? Yeah, NBC. They carried it? Was it NBC? Yeah. yeah. yeah it's NBC. But since I NBC no it. longer has a Constantine show, it's cool for that character to come over. That's true. Um, I... So far, they've done a pretty decent job of keeping metahumans in the Flash and regular human bad guys in Arrow. And while you might see, and we have seen, Oliver or the Green Arrow come over into Flash to help him fly to metahuman, and while we have seen Flash come over into Arrow to help Barry out, or Barry help Oliver out uh, a couple of times, I don't think you're going to see their enemies crossing over. I, I think you're going to see them keep mysticism in Arrow. I think you're gonna, they're going to keep metahumans, per se, in Flash. Mm -hmm. But, you know, at some point, they may just feel we've grown to a point that we need to do something new and let's try it. Mm -hmm. um, maybe in Season 3 of Flash, yeah. Season 5 of Arrow. Holy um, or, or maybe mm -hmm. sooner. I just have a feeling it's going to be a little while before it happens. How yeah. do you guys see it? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. I think, think you're right. I mean, with Dr. Fate, who's such a great character, yeah. you know, that's got to bleed in at some point in The Flash because they keep dropping hints of these other characters in the DC universe that could could or could not show up possibly. But I think what you're, I think you're absolutely right, John. I think this season is just focused on what you see the main storyline we've seen so far and there's not any room for mysticism just yet. It's not being, the groundwork's not being laid in the season for it to be something uh, that will show up this season, but certainly down the road. There's so many characters that it, it could open up so much more stuff for 
Flash to play with uh, in terms of storylines. Yeah, we already have 52 portals open. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, yeah. I don't think we need any that. more to be like, well, this is really serious now. I think 52 portals is enough. That's enough. Yeah. That's and enough. I think it's important to point out, too, that just because they said there are 52 portals, remember they said the biggest one, which wasn't that big, is the one that's in Star Lab, right? right? Mm -hmm. And just because there are 52 portals doesn't mean they're being used. Right. 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 Like, Zoom may be the only one that's using portals mm -hmm. right now, or maybe other people are. We, I mean, we don't know. Did you have any thoughts on this? Will they bring Arrow stuff I mean, over more with mysticism? Or? I think the only way I see it in the near future is if they end up having another crossover episode or Legends of Tomorrow will have a mix oh, match yeah. for that. That's the only way I can see it happening. So sure. not necessarily on the Flash, no. I wonder if they'd ever like do something, because right now the big baddie on Arrow is a character by the name of D uh, Damian Dark. Mm -hmm. I wonder That's if they'd yeah, ever okay. have a thing where like Zoom and Damian Dark team up because they got to bring Ooh. down, they, they want to oh, kill Flash. Yeah. That, would be, that would be hell, that yeah. would be a hell of a two part episode. Mm. Right. One Arrow, mm. Episode one on Arrow, episode two on Flash or vice versa. That'd be interesting. True. All right, let's move on to the last question tonight. And the last question tonight comes to us from Chris who writes, hey guys, love the recap show. Thanks so much, Chris, glad you're watching. <laughs> Do you think we'll see King Shark for his own Villain of the Week episode, hashtag Collider Flash. Only if it's zombie uh, King Shark, <laughs> um, who's going around looking for brain chum, uh, because he is dead. At least that's the impression I got. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't suppose I ever heard them say, <laughs> I mean, Wells killed my life. How'd he kill your life? This giant shark was going to get me, but Wells killed him. I've never heard those words. I don't think yeah. he's dead. Kill yeah. I think he is dead. I mean, they never... Where did they put him? I think I think one of the creators, I think it was in our comment section, somebody did tweet out that I think he's just too expensive to do for a oh, long period probably. of time. So I think oh. I think one of the creators did, because people were asking like, if he's going to come back. Because they're going to do uh, Grodd, yeah. and he's yeah. expensive. So I don't think so. they're going to spend more money. In. I, I'll be honest, if there's like, like a prison break, let's say he was in their prison, he like broke out, Rawr, whatever right. he does, yeah. and come, but that's, I don't think it's going to happen. How about and Grodd and Gorilla together? That'd be I mean, awesome. Grodd, Grodd, Grodd and Grodd. Yeah, Grodd, yeah. Grodd, yeah. Grodd. A lot of people... Get Killer Croc over? <laughs> yeah. Last week, monsters. a lot of people were tweeting me messages saying, oh my God, please give us a Grodd versus King Shark. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Which would be absolutely... You know what? not even so much the expense because I think they find ways I mean we I talked a little bit on movie talk uh, last week I think about there was between visual effects and TV shows and movies you you can't go in with the same expectations uh, they don't have the same budget for mm -hmm. it but it's not even so much the money it's the time yeah, yeah. The time it takes mm -hmm. to make those shots is just time that doesn't fit with a TV production schedule so I don't think we're gonna see King Shark again this season I I, I think I think they're saying he's dead. I think they killed him, but who knows? Maybe he's still alive and they might be able to use him again at some point. And I won't die of shock if they do, but my, I'm leaning towards thinking he's dead. Yeah. I mean... I, like, I, I, I think, think he's alive. What, what do I do with the body? I mean, I who's doing the autopsy on that guy? Yeah. You got to think so much. Like, can I get a peek about what's inside of him? Like, what makes him work? License plates. Yeah. Yeah. Bo old boots. Yeah. They, no, no, they I, cut him open and Samuel Jackson's inside. <laughs> if you get that reference... Bonus yes. points to yes. you yes. get that reference. Hashtag it. <laughs> uh, no, I think I think he is coming back. I, I don't know if they'll do a, a, a week of the episode. Maybe because I mean he's such a such an awesome character in the Flash uh, uh, Flash story that it'd be great. It would be a shame to just introduce him for like one scene or a couple scenes and then have him disappear. Mm -hmm. I really want to believe he's still alive, and I really want to believe he's coming back. Um, and that they'll they'll play with it because it's he's such a it's such a well done character with the way they created him. So it would seem like a waste if they didn't go with it a little bit at least for one episode. We'll Maybe see. Patty Spivitt's gonna go after the King yeah. Shark. Maybe she'll marry the King Shark and not die. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, before we sign off here, let's go around the table and say just a quick prediction for next week, specifically for next week. Okay. So, Corey, let's start with you. What do you think is something we might see happen next week? Well, I'm looking at the title for next week's uh, episode. It's called Enter Zoom. Bo! So, I think there's going to be something really big. <laughs> I wonder Zoom. if Zoom's going to Zoom be related. In it. Uh, uh. <laughs> yes. Um, I think someone is going to get captured. Not, I wouldn't say dead yet, but. Yeah. So, you think another prisoner is getting taken? I think to so. To go in that cell with Wilson's I think daughter. So, yeah. Rocco, what would be one prediction for uh, next week? I think the possibility of Linda Park dying is now in play. I think with her coming into the situation and with her, them using her as bait, which is insane to me, that Barry would be okay with this. Yeah. Uh, no, after the cool. breakup and the ex-girlfriend and all mm. this kind of stuff. Maybe like, that's why he's okay with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that he's a terrible person, <laughs> but I think I think that's that's definitely in play next week. That we, she could die. 
Uh, my uh, bold prediction for next week is this isn't going to be dragged out. I think Wells will reveal next week mm. that his daughter's being held prisoner mm. by Zoom. If I'm not way off base and that scene in the post credits with Zoom and his daughter wasn't actually like five months oh. ago or six months ago. Mm. If it was present, my prediction is Wells makes that reveal to the rest of the team this coming week. What's your prediction? I think and hope that we're going to see Cisco go out on a date with Hot Girl. Ah, yeah. okay. Nice. He, he has some digits. He's he like, got digits. this. He has digits now. I think the he's going to go on a date. The only problem when he takes a closer look at the phone number, it starts with 555. He's like, no, he's it doesn't like, exist. Oh, <laughs> don't, know woman, don't know woman got no 800 number, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that will wrap it up, folks, for this installment of our Collider Flash recap show. All of our thoughts. I mean, overall, for me, my favorite episode of the season so far. I had so much fun watching this. and not, It wasn't just Wells. I mean, I, I, I thought yeah. everybody was on point this episode, and I really enjoyed it. But we want to know, what did you think of tonight's episode? Jump into the comments section of this video. Make sure you click the thumbs up button to like, let us know that you like the episode, but leave your thoughts down there. What did you think of the episode? Some of your pros, some of your cons. Take a bold prediction for what you think might happen next week. And don't forget to tweet us as well at that col hashtag Collider Flash uh, at the same time. I want to thank the people sitting at the table with me, sitting on my left. David, where can people find you online? You can find me on Twitter uh, at GriffinDE. I uh, also got a busy week here at Collider, here tomorrow for Star Wars Rebels After Show, Jedi Council, then back Friday for Movie Talk. Wow. Bam. Busy, busy week. <laughs> <laughs> Say something. Say oh, something. What a Sitting <laughs> over here on my right, Roka, where can people find you? Um, you can find me at the Roka Says, uh, R-O-C-H-A, as you see there. Um, I'm going to be on the Walking Dead uh, recap show we do on Sundays, and you, you can see all the other shows, and I'm going to be wor working on getting David Griffin an Instagram account. Yeah, we, we do. Need and of course, thing. sitting way over there at the end, Corey, where can people find you? Hey, you can find me right over here, K-A-O-R-I-O-U-S. That's everywhere, Instagram. Twitter, YouTube, I brain farted, but you can also find me here at Collider Video. I will be guesting tomorrow for Arrow, of course, Walking Dead, and yeah. join us for Supergirl. On well. Mondays, that's mm -hmm. right. Cool. And of course, you guys can follow me on Facebook or on Twitter, simply at John Campia. That'll do it for us for this installment. Special thanks to Jonathan and Dennis behind the cameras, and thank you to you guys for watching. Make sure you share this video around, share it on your Facebook or on your Twitter, or wherever else you may go. Thanks a lot for joining us, and until next time, bye-bye. <laughs>